The challenge of the Yukon. It's King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the North Country, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On, you huskies! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the greedy race for riches. Now back to the days of the gold rush when Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog King battled through storm and snow to preserve law and order as they met the challenge of the Yukon. It was early spring in the Yukon country. Jim Green and his friend Dan Peters were returning to their homes on the outskirts of Selkirk after a successful day of hunting. Peters was carrying a small animal wrapped in a scarf that wriggled and squirmed like a cat in a bag. As they approached Jim's cabin, Jim's young son, Bob, came running to meet them. Hello, Dad. Yes, he was looking for you. How was the hunt, Dad? Fine, son. We got a big caribou hanging on a tree limb. To go back after with a dog sled. And we got something else, too. <laughs> now, be mighty glad to give it to you. Well, what is it? All wrapped up in your scarf. Here, take him. <laughs> Careful now, he might claw you. <laughs> It's a bear cub. Oh, just a baby. Oh, Dad, he's wonderful. He's a lively one, too. Is he mine? Are you going to let me keep him? If you'll take full charge of him and take good care of him. Oh, I will. Gee, I'd rather have him than, than anything I could think of. Look, he's got a white spot over his eye. Well, now, you don't think your dad and I would bring you just an ordinary black bear, do you? Do you don't think we ought to keep him in the cabin? No, the heat would be bad for him. You'll have to build a pen for him, out and back. Oh, sure I will. Huh. I'm going to call him Blackie. <laughs> well, come on. We'd better take him in and feed him. Gee, Dad, thanks a million. Yes, sir, Blackie. You and I are going to be good friends. <laughs> yes, sir. Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police, on his way back from a northern patrol, was mushing toward Selkirk. On King! On your husky! As he neared the town, a small boy came out of a cabin beside the trail. Looking! Oh, your husky! Hello there, Bob. How are you? I wonder if you have time to stop a minute. I want to show you something. Why, yes, I guess I have. What is it? It's in the back of the cabin. Huh? Say, isn't that a new lead dog you have? Yes, it is. Isn't he a beauty? His name's King. Gosh, he's sure a nice one. Uh, are you letting him go free instead of being harnessed? Well, yes, Bob. He's rather young to be a lead dog. He's hardly more than a pup. But he's smarter and stronger than the rest of the team in spite of it. Maybe you'd better tie him to your sled, Sergeant. You see, he might not like the surprise I'm going to show you. Well, don't worry about King, Bob. I've been training him ever since I got him. He'll do anything I say. Well, all right. Come on. Come on, King. Side me, fella. Dad and Mom went into town for supplies, but well, I thought I'd better stay here and watch Blackie. Blackie? He's a surprise. Here he is in this pen. What? A bear cub. Well, where'd you get him? Dad got him. The last time he went hunting. He's just a baby. He's too young to be afraid of anything. He has a white spot over his eye. I never saw a bear with a mark like that. <laughs> Look at King. He's wagging his tail. You know, I bet they'd be friends if we'd let him. Maybe they wouldn't. Do you think King would hurt him if I let him into the pen? Well, let's try it, Bob. Now, well, let's see. How do you open it? Right here, this wire. Oh. There, it's open. All right, King. Go in and see Blackie. Careful now. Don't hurt him. <laughs> oh, look. <laughs> King is licking Blackie's face. They're both young. They'll be playing together soon. Dogs and bears don't usually get along together, do they? Well, any animals will get friendly if you get them together when they're young enough, Bob. Please, Sergeant. Well, will you bring King back here once in a while and let him play with Blackie? I'd hate to have Blackie get lonesome, and oh, it sure would be nice if he could have a friend. An animal friend, I mean. Sure, Bob. I come to see your father often. When I do, I'll bring King. We'll see that Blackie has a friend. Gee, that'll be fine. And so, through the following months, King and the black bear became friends. Blackie disliked other dogs, but always accepted the big lead dog that he'd known since he was a cub. As the months passed, the bear grew fast, and Bobby's affection for him grew, too. Blackie was almost full-sized when one day two strange men stopped beside the cabin where the animal was chained. Bobby was feeding Blackie as the men approached. Well, sir, that's quite a pet you have there. Yes, sir. I raised him. He was just a baby when I got him. Here's some more fish, Blackie. 
Hey, bet he eats a lot, don't he? He sure does. But I can get all the fish he needs. He likes berries and things. I should think he'd be lots of trouble for you. Oh, he's worth it. That bear make good fur blankets. You quit talking like that. <laughs> Charlie's an Indian. I guess he don't think it's very practical to keep a pet like that. Well, I don't care what he thinks. It's like he's the best pet anybody could have. I suppose you wouldn't think of selling him. I should say not. There isn't enough money in the world to buy Blackie. Uh, that bear him lots of trouble. Maybe he would be to you, but, well, I like it. Well, I ain't interested in buying a bear. I get troubles enough. Is he gentle? Blackie wouldn't bite anybody. Nobody's ever been mean to him. He, he doesn't like dogs very much, though. Doesn't like... And most bears don't. Well, come on, Charlie. We've got to get back to town. Goodbye, kid. Bye. Here, Blackie. Here's some water. Come on. That big bear. Yeah. I could use an animal like that. You mean you want bear? How'd you like to earn some money, Charlie? How much money? Maybe you'd rather be paid off in fire water. What you want me to do? I might need a little help tonight. I'm leaving town. When I go, I'd like to take a big black bear in my wagon with me. Uh, me not help steal bear. I didn't say anything about stealing anything. On second thought, maybe I won't need any help. A job like the one I'm thinking of should be pretty simple. About five weeks later, Sergeant Preston returned from a northern patrol. He was on his way to headquarters in Dawson City when he heard young Bob's voice. Oh, Bob, good to see you. It's sure good to see you. I've been waiting for you to get back. Everything all right at home? No. Blackie's gone. Somebody stole him about a month ago. Stole him? We found his chain file. Someone took him during the night. But why would anyone want your pet bear? He's about full size now, isn't he? Yeah, he's awful big. But, but he was gentle. And... I miss him. He was a nice pet. Remember remember how he and King used to play together? Yes, they always liked each other. King was the only dog Blackie ever liked. Well, Bob, the only thing I can do is keep my eyes open for him. Gee, Sergeant, I knew you'd help me. He's, he's grown a lot since you saw him last, but well, you can always tell him by that white spot over his left eye. No other bear will have a marking like that. But don't plan too much on my finding him, son. This is a big country, you know. But but you're always going on long tri trips to, to different towns. I know, well... I'll certainly try to find him. Maybe I can pick up some information. I'm sure I'll know Blackie if I see him. I, I sure hope you find him. I'll do my best, Bob. See you later. I have to report to headquarters. Thanks a lot, Sergeant. Bye. Bye. Come on, King. Good morning, Inspector. Oh, how are you, Sergeant? Fine, thank you, sir. Uh, there's that dog of yours. How are you, boy? He looks a lot bigger than the last time I saw him. He's full size now, I think, Inspector. Oh, uh, sit down, Sergeant. Thank you, sir. I have another job for you. It's going to mean another patrol north. Yes, sir. It's an Indian village up near Dawson. The Indians are stirring up trouble. I believe you've been up there before, haven't you, Sergeant? Why, yes, sir, I have. I know that tribe. They've always been peaceful. We've never had any trouble with them. I know we haven't, but someone is selling them liquor, I believe. We can't seem to find out who it is. I've used a young Indian guide from that tribe. His name's White Eagle. I believe he's the son of the chief. I might be able to get some information from him. Good. That's what I was hoping for. Well, just what have the Indians done, sir? Well, as yet, there hasn't been any murders. But they have raided a trading post belonging to Pierre LaSalle. Oh, uh, yes, sir. I know Pierre. They did it during the night when Pierre wasn't there. A few trappers have reported being robbed, and a couple of drunken Indians pulled knives on a prospector and stole some gold dust. Now, before things get too violent, we have to find out where they're getting their liquor. I'll do my best, sir. You'll start tomorrow, then? I'll start in the morning, Inspector. I'll see Pierre and try to find White Eagle. Good. The sooner the better. South of Dawson, a big covered wagon stood in the center of the clearing. Huge letters on the side of it read, Beaver Bill... Buy beaver oil, the magic medicine. Near the wagon stood Beaver Bill himself. He was a big, powerful man, and there was a wicked grin on his face as he teased a big black bear that was tied to a stake. The whole beast was bewildered and angry as Bill poked it with a sharp stick. The man was so preoccupied with his cruelty that he failed to notice a young Indian who had come quietly on moccasined feet and stood behind him watching. Come on, you lazy critter. This will teach you not to be a lapdog. Ah, that's better. 
Get your temper up, eh? you wish the chain was longer so you could get at me, huh? <laughs> we gotta keep you training, don't we? Can't let you get gentle, huh? <laughs> you almost cut it that time, didn't you? Why you tease a bear like that? But... Where did you come from? Me from Indian Village. Why you hit bear? Yeah, you gotta keep him in. He might not fight. Anyway, it's none of your business. And don't come sneaking up like that again. You're liable to get shot. Oh, uh, bare leg hurt. The dog done it last night. <laughs> Before he got the dog. What are you doing here? What do you want? We come from Indian Village. Chief White Feather. Him, my father. Now you tell your father them last furs he traded me was poor. I want better ones. Him got no more furs. Well, he'd better get some if he wants any more liquor. And that goes for the rest of your time. Tell him to bring me good furs or gold. Me not tell him that. Me come tell you not sell more fire water to tribe. Tribe all sick. No can hunt or fish. So you're taking it on yourself to tell me what to do, eh? Huh? And it's none of your business if the tribe would rather drink than eat. So keep your nose out of it, Jay. Fire water make bad trouble for tribe. Uh, listen here, Injun. If you want to stay healthy and keep your tribe out of real trouble... You'll get out of here and keep your mouth shut. White man's law say Indians not buy liquor. Oh, listen, you. If you do any tattling to the law, something very bad might happen to you and your father. See that bear? I let him fight dogs in a pit. One of you Indians might accidentally get pushed in there with him during the fight. They can always give the chief a ringside seat. You'll not hurt my father. I'll hurt if you've got sense enough to keep your mouth shut. Now get out of this camp before I put a bullet through your thick skull. Uh, white man, maybe be sorry. Just a few miles from Beaver Bill's camp was Pierre LaSalle's small trading post. When Sergeant Preston arrived, the old Frenchman was alone. Linking. Hello, Sergeant. How are you, Pierre? Oh, it's glad I am to see you and that fine dog of yours. Have you had a little trouble with the Indians around here lately? That I have. Sit down, Sergeant. Warm yourself. I'll give you some nice hot tea. Oh, thanks, Pierre. I could use some. I have just mixed some. While you drink it, I will tell you. You know, it's nice to have the days getting longer. Always seems as if spring never will get here. Uh, here you are, Sergeant. Thanks. Now, uh, tell me about this robbery. Well, everybody talk about this man who camped about five miles from here. He sell what you call uh, uh, beaver oil. Beaver oil? What's that? Oh, I show you. I buy some for my knee. She ate me all the time. Oh, it's just rheumatism you have. Uh, here, here is butter. I rub it on, but my knee, she still eats me. Let's see that. This is just a fake. Won't do your knee any good. What's this to do with the robbery? It is on that night when I go see this man... That my store, she is robbed by Indians. Well, how do you know the Indians did it? My friend Jacques, he meet them on trail when he come home late. They are very drunk and have fur and blankets. Did you go to the village to see if you could identify your things? We, oui, I go, but there is nothing. All fur, she is gone. How much did they steal? Uh, maybe two, three hundred dollars. Ah, that's pretty serious. But couldn't you get anybody to watch your store? No. Everybody go see this Beaver Bill. You mean the man who sells this fake medicine? Oui. Why would everybody want to see him? Well, you see, Sergeant. If you buy his medicine, then you can see his show. His show? Yeah, this man. He has big black bear in pit. He offered $300 to any man that have dog that can stay in pit for three minutes. But no dog can stand up against a bear in a pit. <laughs> that is right. No dog can stay there unless he is dead dog. If dog is dead, Beaver Billy does not pay. You say this man has a black bear? We. Oui. He is big and ugly. I'm looking for a certain black bear that was stolen from a friend of mine. I think I'll go over and see Beaver Bill. Beaver Bill's camp between here and the Indian village? Oui. You go straight north, then turn right at Elk Creek, maybe a quarter mile. I won't have any trouble finding that. We, oui, I hope you get him. As Sergeant Preston approached the camp of Beaver Bill, he left his dog team and, taking King alone, walked along the trail. He noticed a thick group of spruce trees and slowed his pace as he heard King growl and saw the fur on his back bristle. Quietly, the sergeant changed his direction and went around the trees instead of along the path in front of him. A figure sprang up quickly and faced him. Oh, 
Oh, oh, Sergeant Preston, did you? Why did he go? What are you doing here? And why are you holding that knife? Me, me not know it, you. You were waiting for someone else, weren't you? Me not tell. Was it the man they call Beaver Bill? Him go to town. Him not in camp. And you thought he was coming back, is that it? Him bad. Now, why do you say that? Why were you planning to kill him? Me not tell. My father not like it if I tell. You know better than to try to kill a man. Why'd you do it? Him hurt my people. Why'd he go? You know I'm your friend, don't you? Yes. You friend. Soon you'll be chief of your tribe, and you'll be a good, brave chief. We try. I could arrest you for this, but I'm not going to. I want to help your people. There must be a reason for your doing this. <sighs> your tribe's in trouble. That's why I've been sent up here. Now, I promise you I'll help them if you'll help me. Father say no tell. Well, I don't like to ask you to disobey your father. Maybe you come to village. You see. I intended to go to your village from here. We'll go back there together, but uh, wait for me here. I want to have a look at the camp of Beaver Bill. Ah, me wait. A short time later, as White Eagle led Sergeant Preston to the cabin in which his father lived, the Indian village was very still, except for some dogs that barked at them from a distance. When the two men entered the cabin, they found the old chief lying asleep on a bed of spruce boughs. You see, my father, him sick. No can talk. You're right, he's dead to the world. But what's that on the floor? Uh, here. You look. A bottle of beaver oil. He hasn't been drinking this, has he? All braves drink it. A little bit of it left in the bottle. Why, this isn't medicine, it's bad whiskey. Did he get this from Beaver Bill? Me not tell. You find out. But this isn't the same thing that Pierre has. The bottle he bought is some kind of liniment. <sighs> Why, Diggle, you must help me. So far, you haven't told me anything, but I found out for myself. You find fire water in bottle. I know Beaver Bill is selling it to you. I'm going to arrest him. Now, will you help me? You'll be in bad trouble if you don't, and if you do, I'll help your people. Me help you. My people cold, hungry. All gold gone, all furs gone. Braves too sick to hunt. That's what we have to stop. Man sell fire water, take all gold and furs. But he must sell medicine to the white man. Ah. White man pay two dollar, get medicine. Indian pay furs and gold, get fire water. So that's how he works it. He puts medicine in the bottles he sells to the white men and liquor in the same kind of bottles for the Indians. Yeah, that's right. My people soon starve. Me ask him not sell more fire water. Him say him shoot me if I try stop him. Does he have a show every night with the bear, I mean? Ah, him have show tonight. I want you to go there with me tonight, White Eagle. I want you to buy some fire water from him like this. Here, take it. Now, me no want fire water. I don't mean for you to drink. I must have it for evidence. Here, I'll give you this money. You buy it and keep it for me. I'll get it from you later. Maybe him try kill me if him see me near camp. He won't try anything with a crowd of people there. Anyway, King and I will be watching him. Meet me there tonight, White Eagle. That night, a big crowd of men was gathered at the camp of Beaver Bill, surrounding a platform at the back of his wagon. Nearby, in a pit about ten feet square, a big bear blinked at the flaming torches that were set at each corner and growled futilely at the teasing faces that bent above him. As White Eagle approached the crowd, a man leading a big dog stepped into his path. White Eagle. Oh, oh. Sergeant Preston, I not know you without uniform. I was afraid Beaver Bill might not go on with his show if he saw Mouthy in the crowd. Now, uh, as soon as you buy the fire water, bring it to me here. No, uh, me bring it. Beaver Bill's on the platform now. I guess he's ready to make his speech. Come on, let's get closer. Come along, King. All right, gentlemen. All we put on the big show. I want to tell you about these magic medicines, beaver oil. This marvelous concoction has been used for centuries by the crown heads of Europe. It was made from a secret formula, known only by the foremost scientists of Russia and given to the ancestors of King Henry VIII. Beaver oil! <laughs> I bet that's how Henry got rid of all them wives! <laughs> beaver oil! It cures lumbago! Commonly known as backache. It cures toothache, brain, cramps in the stomach, aching joints, and dog bites. Uh, give it to the children for measles, whooping cough, pneumonia, and chillblains. Here it is, folks. The magic cure-all. Only two dollars a bottle. Rub it 
in sprinkle it on or take it in curtly to soothe your drooping spirit. Come on, folks. Show me your money. The more bottles you buy, the closer you get to the bear pit to see the fun that's coming. Remember, $300 to the owner of any dog that stays in the pit with my bear for three minutes. $300. We've got some fun coming, folks. Buy a bottle or two. So you'll be sure I see it. Oh, I'll take two of them. Here you are. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. I had a place over the bed. You Indians step over this side, please. Me wants beaver oil for tribe. Well, white eagle. So your father sent you for it this time. I guess he made you see the air of your ways. Hmm? <laughs> there you are. My compliments to the chief. Next. You, mister. How many bucks? Two. 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 Three. Sergeant Preston, me buy it. Good, White Eagle. Is it liquor? No, oh, it's fire water. Me pay with gold. Fine. Now stay away from me until after the show. I'll call you when I want it. You're not arrest him now? Not yet, White Eagle. I'm going over there now. Come on, King. Uh, me wait here. Yeah. Anybody else want to be royal? Have you all bought bottles for this magic bag? Yeah. All right. Ah, uh, we're ready for the big show. Who's going to try for the $300 prize tonight? Remember, any dog that stays in the pit for three minutes wins it. Any takers? I'll try for that prize, mister. I've got a dog that'll do it. All right. There's a gentleman who wants to try the big stake. Bring your dog to the pit, stranger. Let him do the crowd. Hey, that's a good-looking dog. You better not put him in that pit. Yeah, that barrel will kill him. Well, he's my dog. I can do what I like with him. You're Excuse crazy, me. mister. That barrel will finish him in 40 seconds. Well, that's a big dog. Maybe he can stay alive longer than the rest of them did. This should be good, folks. Anybody want to put any money on the dog? I'll give hard to pin to one. <laughs> Think we're crazy? We seen what the bear done to the other. All right, All right folks, get her on. Don't get inside the room. Them with the most bottles. Get in the first row. Show your bottles. Hey, you, I bought three bottles. You just bought two. Let me get in front of you. No, you don't. I got two more in my pocket. All right, folks. We're about to start. Hey, Mr. Stranger, get your dog ready. Yes, sir. Put your hand in the pit. All right, folks. Get ready. Get your dog ready. Put him in when I say go. I'll time you. He's still alive in three minutes. You get the grand prize. All right. It's set. Get in there. In, I say. The crowd grew silent, tense with excitement as the big dog approached the edge of the pit. The huge bear raised his head and swung it slowly from side to side, growling a warning. The hair on King's back bristled, and then with an answering growl, he sprang into the pit. The bear started toward him, then stopped, seemingly puzzled and uncertain. Both animals sniffed the air. Then King whined softly. The bear had risen on his haunches, but came down on all fours. Slowly, the animals approached each other. It's a matter of Hey, look at that, way. They ain't going to fight. They like each other. They're touching noses. What's the matter with you, you yellow piece of bear meat? Go out there. Well, look, they're touching noses. They like each other. They're putting Well, Beaver Bill... I guess I win the prize. Looks like my dog can stay in there as long as he likes. It sure does. <laughs> Will you look at the critters? Leave them still pays off. This I'll time. show them major yellow colors. I'll make them fight. Here you. Give me that dog. Stop that whip or I'll break every bone in your body. I won't. Give it here. No. Hand over that prize money. Uh, it ain't fair. I won't pay it. You hear that, boy? She's a welcome. Yeah. Maybe Beaver Bill would like to go into the pit with a parent dog. Huh, boy? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, no, 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 no. I'll pay it up there. Here, I, I got the money right here in my pocket. Hand it over. Here you are. The Twenty dollar gold pieces. Two hundred. Thanks, Bill. Now, don't go away. We have a little more business to attend to. Uh, how'd you know that bear wouldn't hurt your dog, stranger? Oh, I just had a hunch when I saw that white spot over his left eye. Well, by darn, I never heard of anything like that. Oh, me neither. What other business you got to do? Just a minute. Wait, Eagle. Oh, me here, Sergeant. Sure. Sure. 
Sergeant. Maybe I should introduce myself. I'm Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police. A bounty. A bounty without his uniform. And I'm putting you under arrest for selling liquor to the Indians. I, you, you can't prove Oh, that. yes, I can. I have the evidence right here. Show him those bottles, White Eagle. Uh, here, bottles. That isn't medicine. It's bad whiskey, Beaver Bill. <laughs> You know there's a law against selling liquor to the Indians. Right, Dickel, you filthy wretch. No, you won't, Bill. I'm taking you with me. You'll spend the night in jail in Dawson City. But, but the wagon, my bear. The bear will be another charge against you. You stole him from a small boy in Selkirk. You can't prove it. As for the furs and blankets in your wagon, most of them belong to Pierre LaSalle. I'll take them back to him. You won't need them where you're going. The next morning, at Pierre LaSalle's trading post, Sergeant Preston put a stack of gold coins on the counter as he talked to Pierre and White Eagle. This is yours, Pierre. Oh, but, Sergeant, I cannot take that money. You have bring back most of what in Indians steal. Well, after you take what's owed you, use the rest for supplies for White Eagle's tribe. Food enough to last through the winter, blankets, whatever they need. Well, that money is yours and King's. No, White Eagle. King and I aren't allowed to accept prize money when we're on duty. Oh, this is a fine thing you do, Sergeant. I don't think we'll have any more trouble with the Indians now. Oh, I thank you for my people. Oh, you will come now and see them? Some other time, White Eagle. King and I must be on our way. You see, uh, there's a small boy down in Selkirk who'll be very anxious to see that bear. Oh, oh. All right, old fella, let's go. It'll be quite a trip with a prisoner and your old friend, Blackie. Oh, oh. Yes, King. The case is closed. The Challenge of the Yukon, a copyrighted feature, is brought to you each week at this time, and all characters, names, and incidents used are fictitious. <laughs> 